Hey everybody, I'm Katie Lee and I'm coming to you live from Food Network's Test Kitchen. This is where all the magic happens, right in New York City at the Chelsea Market. And today I'm going to be talking about my new cooking channel show, Beach Bites, The Kitchen, and I'm going to be a guest judge on Food Network Star this weekend. So all a lot of fun and I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite summer entertaining recipes and a great cocktail to go along with it. So please send in any of your questions. We can talk about food, we can talk about entertaining, we can talk about my dog Fanola, whatever you want to talk about is fine. So I'm going to show you how to make a recipe that I grew up eating and that was for pimento cheese spread. My grandpa always made this and now I've kind of modernized it and put a little different spin on it, kind of upgraded it a little bit for entertaining for when you have guests. So I'm using goat cheese and smoked cheddar, but you can totally substitute whatever you like in this. You know, usually the traditional way is just cheddar cheese, as sharp as you want it or as mild. So I've got a couple of logs of goat cheese in here and I just let these get soft to room temperature and then kind of mash it up a little bit. So this is gonna be really creamy and yummy. And I've got smoked cheddar. And I like smoked cheddar in the summer because it's kind of like, you know, that flavor you would get from the grill and you can have it in an appetizer instead. So you wanna just mix this all together so it gets nice and combined and then add to it the ingredient. Oh, we got a question. What's the question? Uh, Mark wants to know, can you use white cheddar? Mark wants to know if you can use white cheddar. Absolutely, you can use white cheddar. You could use Gouda cheese, Fontina cheese, really whatever your personal preference is. Whatever you've got in the refrigerator when you're trying to whip this up quickly is fine. So I just added to it some jarred pimentos, and that's really, you know, obviously the namesake ingredient, pimentos. I'm mixing those in, and then you gotta have mayonnaise for pimento cheese spread. This is basically like a food group where I'm from. I love mayonnaise. And the mayonnaise just kind of holds it all together and really gives it that great creaminess. And really it's delicious. So what can I not say about mayonnaise? We got another question. What's the uh, question? Travis just joined, wants to know what we're making again. Travis just joined, he wants to know what we're making and it's a goat cheese and smoked cheddar pimento cheese spread. Okay, so I've got the mayo in there. Now I'm putting some scallions. So I'm using the light green and white parts only, very thinly sliced. You know, if you don't want too much onion flavor, you can leave this out, or you could use shallots, would be yummy too. Another question, what's our question? Gloria wants to know, what about fat-free cheese? Gloria wants to know, what about fat-free cheese? Gloria, this is the time to splurge. Just use the regular cheese. It has so much more flavor, and just, you know, have less of it or run an extra mile on the treadmill that day. I'm not really a fan of the, the fat-free or the low-fat cheeses. Another question? Uh, Jean wants to know, can we use bacon bits? Jean wants to know, can we use bacon bits? You're a genius, Jean. That sounds delicious. Of course, put some bacon bits in there. And I'm gonna add some sweet pickle relish. I really like the sweetness of these pickles next to that smoky cheddar and the saltiness and the onions. It really just takes it to the next level. And then I add in some onion powder. You could also put garlic powder in here if you wanted to do like a seafood spin on this. You could put in some crab boil seasoning. And then I put a couple dashes of hot sauce. This is optional. Make it as hot or as not hot as you like. Another question? Uh, Neil wants to know, can you grill the mix on some bread? Um, what was his name, Neil? Yeah. Neil wants to know if you can put this on some bread and grill it, like a grilled cheese. Neil, that's a wonderful idea. So delicious to make this grilled. You know, when my grandpa used to make me grilled cheeses, he would always put mayonnaise on it, and the mayonnaise, you know, melts into the cheese. So the pimento cheese is like, it's already done that step for you. So that's a great thing to do, especially if you have some leftover from a party. I'm gonna make a little sandwich with this. I like to do this like if you're having a garden party or a baby shower, graduation party. You just put it on some white bread. I like it, you know, a pretty generous amount. And then you just make a sandwich. Oh, put a little bit of thinly sliced cucumber on here. And some thinly sliced radish is nice and peppery as well. And it just kind of like adds a little extra something. And then I cut the crust off. I save the, that part and eat that. <laughs> I'm always taking little bites when I'm in the kitchen cooking for a party. And then you got a nice pretty little sandwich. And we've got another question. What's the question? Uh, Brock wants to know, do you have any 
preferences on bread? Any preferences on bread, really whatever you like. So I've got some that are made with white bread, some with a wheat bread. You could use a gluten-free bread here if you're gluten-free. You could do sourdough would be yummy. Really whatever you like, whatever you have around. And I also did it for a cocktail party. I like it with crudite. It's really pretty to put out with some fresh summer veggies. I mean, look at these watermelon radishes. Aren't these gorgeous? I mean, they're so pretty to have that on a table when you've got people coming over. So good. And if you're having a barbecue, take this and put it on a burger. Hello. So I've got some grilled buns here and I've got some burgers going. Get one of these burgers on here. And then you just spread the bun with your pimento cheese. Oh, and I like to put a lot of pimento cheese on this because I want it to really stand up to the meat. So just slather it on there. I've got some bacon because bacon, honestly, it always just makes it better, right? Oh, so good. And then I've got some bib lettuce for a little bit of crunch. And I like to use bread and butter pickles for this because they're really sweet next to that smoky cheddar. Or you can use sweet gherkins and slice those up. That would be really good too. I mean, look at that burger. I know what I'm having for lunch later. It looks good. And of course, you gotta have something to wash all this down with. So I made a little cocktail for you. Oh, but we got a question. What's our question? Um, Haley wants to know what kind of burger can you do with a veggie burger? So Haley wants to know other kinds of burgers you could do this with. Could you use a veggie burger? Absolutely use a veggie burger. Any kind of turkey burger would be great with this. Just before we went live, we were talking about ground lamb. I love a lamb burger and you could use this recipe and substitute some feta cheese in there and do like a lamb and feta cheese burger would be super yummy with turkey to do some smoked cheddar, also really yummy. We got another question? Um, if wants to know, did Jeezy end up liking pimento cheese? Oh, the question is, did Jeezy end up liking pimento cheese? Because I made pimento cheese on the kitchen and he was very skeptical, but yes, he did like it. So I converted Jeezy to pimento cheese. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wash it all down with a great cocktail. Summertime, really make use of all that sweet fruit. There's so much natural sweetness in fruit during the summer because it's at its peak that you don't need to add a lot of sugar to cocktails, and you can still get that fruity, sweet cocktail thing going. So I'm making a watermelon rum punch today. I love to do a punch or a pitcher drink when I have friends over because then I'm not, you know, doing individual drinks for cocktails. I can make one big thing of it and then serve it as we go. So in this pitcher, I took some watermelon, cubed it up, put it in the blender, it turns it into a juice, and then I added to it orange juice and lime juice. And then I'm gonna top it off with ginger beer. So ginger beer is a little bit of a misnomer. There's no alcohol in it, but ginger beer is made from brewing the ginger whereas ginger ale is essentially carbonated water with the ginger added to it. So this is just like a little stronger of a flavor. It pairs really nice with rum, which rum is also in here. I forgot to mention that key ingredient, some watermelon rum punch. So the ginger beer just gives it a nice effervescence, which, you know, when it's hot outside, those bubbles help cool you down. We got a question? Eduardo wants to know what is your favorite? Eduardo wants to know, what is my favorite summer drink? Well, I love rum drinks because I think rum just feels like festive and feels like you're at the beach, but I'm also obsessed with Aperol spritzes. That's one of my favorite cocktails. I, I just love it. It's easy to make. It's just Aperol, Prosecco, and a little bit of club soda over ice. I have that with like a plate of prosciutto and some Parmesan cheese, and I'm a happy girl. We got another question? Uh, Sandra wants to know if you can add lemon. Sandra wants to know if you can add lemon to the juice. Of course, that'd be great. I used lime in this, but you could totally use lemon. And you know, if you don't have watermelon, you could also make this recipe with just orange juice, pineapple juice, lime juice, some lemon juice, and the rum, and it becomes like a classic rum punch. And then I like to garnish it with a piece of watermelon. And the watermelon kind of soaks up the rum in there. So when you get done with your drink and you bite into that, you got like a nice little extra surprise. We have another question? Um, someone wants to know if you could put tequila in it and turn it into adult popsicles. Someone wants to know if you can put tequila in this and make it adult popsicles. The answer is, I don't see why not. You could totally substitute 
the tequila for the rum. The only thing is, is when you're trying to freeze it, the alcohol can make it not freeze as solid. So don't put as much tequila. Put part tequila and part water and then they will be able to freeze. You'll have a better shot at the freezing. You can just make it like a watermelon margarita and just have the watermelon juice, put in silver tequila and lime juice, salt the rim of the glass, delicious. So I'm garnishing with an orange slice now as well. I mean, don't these look festive? So fun. Oh, we got another question. Uh, Cynthia wants to know sugar the glass or you salt? So Cynthia wants to know about sugaring the glass or using salt. I wouldn't use salt with this recipe, but sugar would be really pretty if you wanted to do that. You could add a little bit of pink coloring to it if you wanted um, to give it that little extra pop, but really you don't have to. You know, it's a, a step if you want to do it, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, but yeah, sure, that would look pretty. So on Food Network Star this weekend, when I, I guess judged, um, the challenge was that the contestants had to do Snapchat videos. And it was really a lot of fun because social media has become such a part of the way we consume media these days um, and just life in general. You know, to watch them uh, convey who they were into this condensed amount of time was really, really fun and I think really indicative of how they would be as a Food Network star. So this is my little cocktail time right here. You can put this all on a tray. I like to do a cocktail tray when I'm entertaining. So I put the drinks on it and hors d'oeuvre. Sometimes I just buy kettle potato chips and I put them in a pretty bowl and then some almonds and some olives. I didn't really have to cook anything, but when you put it in something pretty, it suddenly is great for entertaining. And it's, that way you can just have stuff in your pantry throw it together and if somebody stops by you suddenly have a great cocktail time. And just keep a bottle of champagne in the refrigerator. You can always pop that or Prosecco. That's good cava. Also really yummy. We got another question? Okay, we have like a few more questions from fans. Uh huh. Um, yeah, let's so have the questions. Uh, okay. Michelle says you're so, so stylish. Who are your favorite designers? Oh, Michelle, you're so nice to say I'm stylish. Thank you. Flattery will get you everywhere with me. Um, some of my favorite designers. Uh, you know, I shop all over the spectrum. I like to go high and I like to go low, and I love sale shopping. Um, today, my dress is from Zara. Um, I really like Zara. I love H&M. Um, I, let's see, designer-wise, you know, kind of all over the board. It kind of depends on what I'm doing um, for what I'm wearing. Uh, Bob wants to know what is your favorite emoji? Bob wants to know what my favorite emoji is. Lately I've been really into the hamburger emoji and I probably use the pizza and spaghetti emoji way more than anyone ever should. Um, I love carbs and I have a problem with like the whole no carb thing. So my hashtag is no carb left behind and I always follow it with the pizza and the spaghetti emoji because I love carbs. <laughs> Now it wants to know what my favorite meal to eat or cook is. Well, much like my favorite emoji, probably pizza. <laughs> I could eat pizza every day for the rest of my life, and I love to make it as well. I went to a pizza school and learned how to make true Neapolitan pizza, and I got a pizza oven. Um, that's you know, I did that this weekend. I made pizzas with my friends, and I, I just love it. I can't get enough pizza. I also love fried chicken, and I love big salads. Like a big, big salad makes me so happy. Take one more question. All right, we got one more question. Edmar wants to know if you have a favorite moment from the kitchen. What was his name, Edmar? Mm -hmm. Okay, Edmar wants to know if I have a favorite moment from the kitchen. Um, there are so many moments on the kitchen that would be favorites. Uh, we have a really good time on that show. I'm really lucky to work with such fun people. Um, a favorite moment... There's two that really stand out. One is um, we did a, an episode with a pinata, and we all just went right back to childhood, like scrambling to get the candy like it was going somewhere and that it was all going to disappear. Um, and then another time we did a Halloween episode, and our producers were trying to scare all of us. And Sonny and I were in the middle of a segment, and a huge um, crow fell from the ceiling to scare us. And 
We started screaming like someone, you know, like a ghost had just come in. Like it was so funny, and I'll I'll never forget that. They always are trying to to do a little something to us. So that was a lot of fun. And then there's a, an episode coming up um, where I'm just gonna say uh, there was an inflatable hot dog and a slip and slide. So you tune in for the rest of that. <laughs> So that was all of our questions for today and our recipes. I've got the goat cheese and smoked cheddar, pimento cheese spread, watermelon rum punch, and pimento cheeseburgers. So you can get all of these on Food Network's website. Be sure to tune in to Beach Bites, my new show on Cooking Channel, Thursday, 10 p.m., The Kitchen on Saturday at 11, and Food Network Star, where I'm guest judging on Sunday at 9 p.m. So lots of good, fun stuff, great recipes. I'm so happy you guys joined me today. This was really a lot of fun. I'm going to go eat my pimento cheese now. So thanks a lot.